Saluton, Kai Bon on Targon, welcome to another fucking LA Noir belated, 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 delayed. I couldn't decide whether to say belated or delayed. It came out as like delated. That's probably a word. Yeah, um, I blame the fucking weather. I think I've mentioned this before. It's been insufferably hot most of the time for about a month, which has really thrown a uh, span in the works of me recording shit because I really worry about the computer overheating if I play for any extended length of time. I could probably clean it out occasionally, that would probably help, but you know, today it's currently pissing it down with rain to such an extent, in fact, that you you might hear the occasional gust of wind and water just splashing against the against the window, don't mind that. Uh, that's the entire intro I planned ahead, and actually I'm behind schedule today, so let's go! What happened last time? Um, I want to say the White Shoe murder, which the White Shoe... Again, it's one of those, a lot of these cases, I must be missing a clue, i am probably just missed a clue or something, but I often find the cases, the names aren't particularly relevant, so I'm, I'm probably missing something. Dun dun dun! Also, a lot of these titles have like murder or killing or slaying in the name, which isn't very exciting. Studio sick. oh no, <laughs> she got murdered by a train, I thought that's what was about to happen. Oh dear, is someone drunk? Oh dear. Now again, I, I don't actually like these little intros because, I mean, to, I suppose to an extent they might be like a red herring. Oh dear. I suppose to an extent they might be like a red herring, but I actually prefer the mystery of just finding the body and having no idea what happened, you know? I definitely remember what he's talking about. <laughs> That's one issue is, if you're watching, if you're the one person who's watched all these videos, you probably remember what happened better than I do. <laughs> oh yes, Deirdre Moller, that one. I do enjoy this game, but the, the formula is quite like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Another body. And I just find uh, I want to love it. I want to love the cheesiness and the setting and the looking for clues. And it's just my sort of level of difficulty too, where the clues are fairly obvious if you think about them. But there's just I don't mind like the car chases and stuff. In fact, I actually think that that kind of spices it up and makes it a bit more you know good variety and uh, better pacing and all of that. I don't mind the car chases and stuff. Um, I just think stuff like the open world. They give you this open world, but there's literally nothing to do other than the occasional like scripted, pointless side mission that accomplishes nothing. Anywho, someone's been murdered as usual. <laughs> That's how all these episodes start. Anyway, someone's been murdered. Let's go to the rail yard. Yeah, because we're supposed to go to the pawnbroker as well and check out the uh, the wedding rings, but I feel like investigating the body first would actually be useful. Street crime, pawnbroker. Oh, that's miles away, the fucking rail yard. I can't be bothered to drive over there. Come on. You drive. I like to drive occasionally because it is funny to just crash into people like a maniac, but uh You've got to admit this is looking odd. Yeah, anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators. Cole. Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He <laughs> ran the guy. Fingered the wrong guy. He always maintained he was set I've up. been there. <laughs> you know, just in the spur of the moment it's like, whoops, you're not who I thought you were. Oh dear. Is that a fetish accidental? No, oh god no, let's let's not even think about that. <laughs> as soon as I thought about too long I realised the grey area I was walking into with that conversation topic, so let's, let's shut up now. <laughs> Especially in this game of all things. Oh god, hang on. I was confused for a second, I thought I was driving, but I'm just following this guy for some reason. What's the point in this sequence where we just drive a little bit? Is it meant to be like tense, like oh no, a car. Yeah, that really didn't accomplish anything, did it? 
Ooh. You sucked her brains out. You're doing a you're doing a great job looking after the rail depots with that dead lady there. You're really looking after the place. Good job. Hang on, so there's a black guy. I refuse to use the term that uh, the chap in question used. Hmm. Let's uh, let's see what he says first. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. She seemed a bit dead. About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Oh. So was there another guy? Because I wasn't listening at all. Or maybe it's this guy he was talking about. Oh. Good morning, ladies. Hello. Ferdinand Jameson, we need you to answer some questions, John. And if you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. <laughs> what are you doing to the body? <laughs> I like how Phelps Should does call him by his preferred name. Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. Ooh. Okay. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. <laughs> Back in the good old days when you could just slap a guy. Hmm. <laughs> I love he has to has to extend it as well. Like, hmm. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! <laughs> Don't hit him. <sighs> For once, I'm on Rusty's side. I think the pu I mean. <laughs> Understandable reaction, but I feel like this is another one of those cases where an obvious pervert, you know, he might be a weirdo, but he hasn't technically broken the law, so I don't think he's the murderer. Uh, I mean, it's creepy. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I mean, it'd be creepy if she hadn't been fucking murdered. It's doubly creepy because she's murdered. You fucking. Okay. Actually, now you mention it, he is. Oh God, I don't want to know how much he's interfered with the evidence. We'll get to that in a second. Yes, I did. I worked. I found her after I killed her. Headed home. Oh dear. Oop, oop. Doubt him. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I can tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him. Hmm. As much as it pains me, I have to ask him about interfering with the body. You uh, went through her purse. It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's telling the truth. That will be that will be a weird thing to lie about. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. You're under arrest, James. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine. Yeah, you kind of, kind of had that coming. Fly. You get this sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. <laughs> I do love how, at the time, you could apparently just beat people up, and it was like, eh, whatever. Well, so he's an obvious weirdo, but I don't think he's killed her. Um, he might have seen something, is the more important thing. Okay, let's look at the body. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age. Lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing. At least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death through strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would Oops, be my someone's guess. playing Dave's X, that's nice. Okay, alright, do a little in investigating, some spelunking, oh god. Uh, here you'll see I've got nothing in my hand, and nothing up my sleeves, okay. 
I don't think there's going to be anything significant there. Did she fight? Oh no, the wedding rings! The wedding rings... All these seemingly unconnected cases... It's about the wedding rings. Huh. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best mm -hmm. I can do. That guy did raise an, a good point. Is Remember, all these horrible crime scenes we've seen, all the horrible things we've had to investigate, also bear in mind that most people shit themselves when they die, which Hollywood tends to gloss over. So that definitely would add a uh, an element of... Uh, I would add an element to the crime scene. Also, can I just point out, that's a fact. So did this guy just snog this fucking corpse after she died and shattered so, Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> The usual evacuation smell. Oh, I'm into it. <laughs> this is a chip for personal items, not booze. It's something worth investigating. Okay. Bowling pin. This is a heck of a liquor shop if it sells bowling pins and s s statuettes and. <laughs> Come to my liquor store and and bowling emporium. It's always a fucking match matchbook. Maybe someone at Menches will remember. Menches, Uber Mensch. I still got Wolfenstein on the mind because I desperately, desperately want to play Wolfenstein too. Good morning, lady. You could go over to the lot and see what they know about her. Hmm. That's gonna be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Oh. Never mind then. I was just thinking another movie set. We've had enough movie sets. Oh my god. Dear Evelyn, I hope this letter finds you in a better way than when we last part. A bit of, a bit of words were exchanged. You had taken too much liquor, and we both know that makes what that makes you become. But I know I'm not writing to harass and accuse. I'm writing to apologise. I was heartbroken in seeing what you had become of my little girl, and what she is doing to herself. You are destroying your body and her soul with liquor, Evelyn. It is hard for me to watch than you can imagine, but only God Almighty above us has the right to judge. So I beg your forgiveness. I've been in contact with a <gasps> sanitarium here in Connecticut on your behalf. They say your condition is an illness, Evelyn, and that it can be treated. You have to only have you only need to check yourself in. It will not. Something. Okay, so presumably dad or mother. I'm gonna guess mother, just from the like emotional inclination. I, I don't see a dad from this time period saying like, "Oh my little girl, what is heartbroken?" I'm probably making horrible assumptions here. Anyway, it's a parent of some sort. Well, okay. These blood stains significant. <laughs> it's a bad splatter on the carriage. She must have been struck while standing up. Yeah. Yeah, definite uh <laughs> my god, there's been a murder. Okay, what does Rusty think? What's next, Rusty? Rusty Rusty I'm not a wall. Yes, yes, I totally forgot about that actually. Oh god, I've got lots of places to find, haven't I? Pawnbroker, set as destination. Come on then, in the car, in the car we go. Hang on. Can you go to this one? Yep, you drive. Come on, Rusty. Hey, Rusty, Rusty, Rusty. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> Get in the car. I just love how I treat him as my personal butler and chauffeur. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right about that. People are starving to death. Want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists? Really? Oh, is the Chinese civil war still going on? I love, I love how Rusty's like. Eh, I suppose that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty was so outraged, he's like, oh, to fight communist. Well, I guess that's okay. 
about your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country will be angry. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? <laughs> I'm just watching the rain outside. It's so, it's so lovely having rain. I have to tell you, it's been so damn hot here for so long. It's been like 35 degrees in London. I'm like, oh my god, I'm never living in London. Not as... Shoot me now if I ever say I'm going to move to London. Anywho, one of the dodgy. Always seems to me with these sorts of shops, how do you like? Someone comes in and says, "Hey, please sell it. Please buy this thing." How do you know where it came from? As long as it's not obviously blood-stained, or they're trying to sell a suspicious number of items. Or... Something for this pledge. Give that some money. Now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give it? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty. Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love Frosty, like, you'll, you'll take ten and you'll be happy. There's someone sold in these rings. Mark here. Maker's Mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. <sighs> Another destination. There's an inscription here. One ring to rule them all in the darkness. Mine. Does this mark mean anything? Twenty two oh, carat. Gives you an idea of the quality. <laughs> like even I know that. <laughs> see, it means that ring is worth twenty two carats. You see, or five potatoes. Fifteen Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium I was gonna say medium height, medium build. Sorry, he just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremen. Is that like through a scanner darkly, where they have that suit where you put it on, and it makes you like no one? They'll see that you're a person there, but they're like, I'm not sure. Is it man? Is it woman? Were they tall? Were they short? I'm like, that is a cool suit. They tried to show that in the movie, but in the movie it just looked really well. I don't think that's an effect that you can show visually very well. I think it works better in, in prose, because you have to just imagine, like, you know, it's it's like it's just so... You, I mean, I guess, especially if you think... It seems ridiculous, though, especially if someone's just sat in front of you that you wouldn't be able to figure out what they look like. <laughs> Where at the very least you'd go, why does their face keep changing? You know, like, oh, God. Um, I guess we'll go. Help me out. I say we check out Mance's place. By the smell, this broad spent a good chunk yes, of time. Yes, yes. Time to go to the bar. Oh, so there isn't actually a jeweler's to go to. Uh, let's go to the bar. Actually, well, bef okay. I'll put the bar down. Uh, let's go to the liquor store because I feel like the bar is probably going to be like the. Mm. No, okay, we'll follow. God's sake, we'll follow Rusty's advice. Let's go. Oh, I don't think we. Oh, that question mark. I think we don't actually know where the liquor store is. I think that's what the question mark is. I bet we have to phone that in. Excuse me. I just want to use the phone. Cole Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. <laughs> would be the one at 939. It cracks me up that he phones this lady, and it's her job to just like flip through an encyclopedia or something and go like, yeah. It's literally like Red Dwarf, where they think Holly is just—he's supposed to be a, a computer with IQ six thousand, but they reckon he just gets his answers from a children's encyclopedia with pictures. He's like a black hole would be a thing that. Could... <laughs> Anywho, uh, off we go. You know the way. You can drive. You know the way. You can drive. Car slave. Bogus. Purpose having fun with us. 
guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. Mm. Figure that. Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. The Dahlia letters are genuine, and the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Mullen. Dun dun dun. that, though. Skipper ain't gonna like this one. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. I like how often, like, the skipper, the captain guy, he, like, just. He just outright interferes with their investigations by demanding a quick, easy conviction. Like, I don't care about your grander conspiracies, I just want an easy conviction I can show the judge, you know? Like, oh my god. Justice. Why is the music so dramatic? Great fellas. Phelps, Galloway, I'm aside. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Madge. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted them to know, Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, pageant drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Stunk. Who did she drink with? Yeah, a bunch of these guys. Ask her out. Hmm. What's your name? Grover McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, Detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers, and why she was found beaten and strangled oh my God. in the depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's like, okay, I see you mean business. I mean, this guy's creepy just by virtue of the way he's talking, so I'm gonna assume he knows something. Did you see okay, I see your point. I uh, was at home. Writing. <laughs> uh, as you can tell by my shifty eyes, I'm uh, telling the truth. Do you want to get dragged into this, McCaffrey? Do you want us to get interested in you? She hung out with this powder puff, James Tiernan. They haunted the public library too. How well do you know James Tierney? Mm. I know he works some kind of plebeian job at Plebeian? Rawlings Bowling. <laughs> I like this guy's vocabulary. Rawlings. Plebeian. I know that place. Corner of Ninth and Grand. Like Rusty, Tom notorious Tom bowler. Tom. Hmm. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. <laughs> okay. Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. <laughs> Standing up for workers' I rights, what a bastard. You should be willing to work for zero money at any beck and call. This guy. You a friend of Evelyn Summers? Who's asking? Very cute. You know who's asking. I know my rights. You don't have any. Answer the question. <laughs> Evelyn mooches for drinks. I don't have any time for that. Was that so hard? Keep writing me, copper. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, I'll just see if the barkeep knows anything else. No. You're free to speak to the regulars. Just don't shake them too hard. Well, I just ran to beat up one guy and accused another one of murdering someone, but you know, not too hard, I guess. What do you? I say we try the liquor store next. To to, the, to the liquor store. Oh God, fucking bowling alley too. Now, a bowling alley, that would be a much more exciting place for a murder to happen. Imagine someone bowling and then, and then it's like, oh no, I accidentally threw the ball at their head. Chain of command, Skipper will decide who needs to know. Got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Me comprenas. Said me ne shatas chin. Yes, and she'll ask my Esperanto progresses. 
I'm actually learning Norwegian now so that I can move to Norway and uh, escape summer. Which everyone says, oh, British summer, oh no, that's not, it's not summer. But I'm like, I hate all summers everywhere. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm moving my cushion. I nearly dropped it. Evelyn? She's dead. This is shocking news to me. Robin. Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff. Can you show us, please? She kept some of her stuff here in case she was ever murdered. We got a runner. No, I thought he was going to run away. Pew pew pew. No, I think he's behaving, I think. You got some fine stock here, Mr. Robin. Now you let us chase him to the road, this chase might get solved a lot quicker. <laughs> he's joking, Mr. Robin. <laughs> he kept a bed here. But I probably shouldn't have let him. Alcoholic in a liquor store. That was never gonna work out. Yeah, um you're like the worst person to uh hmm. You're probably the worst person to have, like, I mean, you know, I admire the, admire the thought, but literally anyone else, wow. What exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? Ah. Oh, wait, because the, the, um, thing went under, did she lose her job when it went under? That must be it. Yes. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink or something. Well, we knew that. I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Yeah, I think the, the I think this uh, there's a mirror down there. I think the uh, the movie company is significant. Oh. Maybe they all died in a freak bowling accident. Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was a new drink. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Interesting. This this case is going deeper. There's so many people involved. What's this letter? Is this a letter or something? No. Oh, I like how her mirror is broken. Oh. oh. Certainly two people. Oh my god, someone we don't know. You could ask the guy who that is. That might be useful. Now we've been there, they do that. That must be all the clues, mustn't it? What next? Question the owner. You must know something. Yeah, where's that guy gone? There he is. No, we haven't actually interrogated him yet, have we? Okay. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. Came by in the morning. A social visit? To pick up some of her things? We had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. I think this guy's I think this guy's on the level. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. Hmm. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Interesting, interesting. Are you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robin? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. Aww. I got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her stay with me. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. To be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. I feel sorry for this lady. Because some of the murder victims, well, <laughs> some of the murder victims were at least somewhat assholey. Where she's like, oh. A friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey. Um. Hmm. He's blinking a bit. Hmm. 
That must be oh it must be the mother, yes. I predicted it was a lady. We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. <sighs> Is he the guy? From what I gather the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Hang on, is that the writer? Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. We're doing well today with the questions, aren't we? Hey. I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. I think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother. Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never heard anything. Hmm, so that McCaffrey guy, is that the writer we met? Dun dun dun! Oh, we have to ask him. Oh! Oh! We have to get back. You see, you say bowling alley, I need to know what this fucking guy... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's go to the bowling alley. We'll go to the bowling alley, but if that doesn't go anywhere, I want to go to... Uh, no, okay. We'll go to the fucking fucking bar again, just because we gotta talk. We gotta talk to the writer. He knows something. He's a shifty son of a gun. No, we're ignoring the distress call. What's that? Oh, that's us. Interesting. Let's not keep the man waiting. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Just just steal my investigation, why don't you, Captain? I'm doing an investigation here, Chief. I gotta find him. I need numbers. I need a... Just, just, I'm just rambling like I assume a 50s cop would ramble. I feel like the standout character in this game is Rusty. He just... He's a bastard, but he's a lovable bastard. I love how he just punched that guy with no warning earlier. Just hmm. Why did you bother opening the other door? That like, oh, the guy on the left just opened the door for you, you sod. What else have I been doing? I've been playing XCOM 2 as well as Witcher 3. Those are like my two main games I've been playing for a few months now and my god they're both excellent. XCOM 2 is like one of my favourite strategy games in a long time. Even though it kicks my ass and Witcher 3 is so good. Advice? They're waiting for us downstairs. Oh okay, you mean just, just walk <laughs> advice? We could walk into the room for help. I don't want to air it outside of this room. Evidence oh. is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycat. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes, the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Charleston didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BB. That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> looking at what? Cunt is all about access, son. You're married. Yours is mortgage. Some of us like to pay by installment. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case, but it's up to you to decide. Hmm, assistant. Keep this under your hat. Follow up on Evelyn Summers. I want daily reports. He's being suspiciously responsible all of a sudden, this Captain. You were quite smart. We got our order. Back to the Summers case. Get an address from the captain who will blow the bar. Oh, fuck. God, it's like they knew. As soon as I heard about McCaffrey, it was like, hello. He was a random person. Okay. Out the way, Rusty. Oh no, not this way. How do I get out of here? Everywhere looks the same. Is it this way? This is the way. 
Or if this just led to a completely different city, like, whoa, where have we gone? Oh shit, you're ahead of the game, Rusty. Okay. Um... It's just the bowling alley, isn't it? Because we don't know where his apartment is, I don't think, so... Actually, well, I I, I want ah uh, just in case that guy gets away, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the phone. Excuse me. Let's go to the phone and ring him up. Hello, phone. <laughs> Such an awkward. I'm surprised there's no like rain cover on the phone. You know. They couldn't afford it. They can only afford a phone. They can't afford a little umbrella. I need an address for a Grosvenor Well, like, I saw a lifeguard the other day at the beach. Not that I was at the beach, it was on TV, obviously, I don't go to the beach. Um, and he sat on his little uh, his little ladder chair, you know, a chair atop of a ladder, but he didn't have a hat on and he didn't have any sort of shade. And I'm like, that seems like a really obvious thing you'd put at the beach for a lifeguard, is a, just even an umbrella of some sort. Just, to, you know, I'm sure he's coated in sun cream, but still. You think he could bring his own umbrella and just sellotape it? Uh, right, okay, we've got the guy's address, which I'm definitely eager to investigate. I knew that guy was suspicious, the way he was talking, you know. Let me pose a question. And, what to do with morals? Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. What? Depends. Except the poor son of a bitch in the slam river found out. <laughs> I feel like for a policeman that's a fairly obvious question. Would you feel bad if you accidentally incarcerated the wrong person? Yes. <laughs> I just feel like a long time since I started playing this game. I need to play more regularly now, I'm in a less hot environment. Oh hang on, wait, Whoa, we gotta find out which what number he is. Caffrey. Caffrey six. six. I forgot the tradition of always looking. Um I can't bloody see what numbers they are. Ah, uh, three and four. Okay, it must be on the next level. Okay. Also, can you just walk? You can just let yourself into this apartment complex. Apartment six. Come on. Doesn't look like anybody's home. Oh shit. Okay. Can we do that? I feel like we need a warrant. But that's okay. Hmm, nice, not too shabby. Oh, the music's all creepy, I bet there's something going on in this place. Can I not use this door? Okay, that's just the loo, I guess. Oh, that's suspicious. Oh boy. Methinks we have a winner. See Carruthers argue his way out of this. And he walks in. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? From the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Yeah, you could say that. You could say that. We need to find him. I'm in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his morning. Oh, and actually, a literal pigeon coop. I assumed that was like slang for something. Oh no, I hope the pigeons are okay. <laughs> I imagine him sat there with his pigeons, blind drunk, like only my pigeons understand me. I mean I mean that's how I spend my weekends, but You talking about you talking about you talking to me? I think it'd be very easy for that pigeon to escape. Oh shit! He suddenly doesn't. He suddenly doesn't care about his pigeons. 
Oh, come on you. Oh, this is what I'm on about though. This is the exciting bit where it's like, yeah, get him. He's clearly up to something. Da -da 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 -da. You see, these sequences, they do like add something to the game, you know. I, th I guess the shooting, or the amount of shooting you do gets a bit ridiculous at some point, but uh, I don't mind because it's like part of the fantasy, isn't it, of being an LA cop. Da -da 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 -da. I can't remember how to like tackle, you have to get close enough. Probably not allowed to shoot him there. <sighs> Don't make me run, I'm full of chocolate. <laughs> oh, I think he's getting tired. Oh yeah, get him. <laughs> on extreme suspicion. <sighs> well, I'm actually an incredible policeman to have just completely cracked this case in one day, but you know, hey. You're having some trouble with your car there, you just completely smashed that hot dog stand or whatever that was. <laughs> Someone's drink driving. Where do we where do we go now? To the to the Oh well we got let's go to the bowling alley quickly, see what's there. And then we can interview the perp. I'm eager to finish this in the next like twenty minutes. Since I meant to mention my bloody crap top is really crapping out on me. It's like there's a there's a very specific ritual I have to do to make it run Sony Vegas properly to let me record. You have to plug the thing in, the microphone in while it's still off, and then turn it on, and then Sony Vegas takes about ten minutes to load up. And then by some miracle it eventually works, but don't put it to sleep while it's in Sony Vegas, because then you have to quit Sony Vegas. Turn it off again and open the, the I very rarely turn my laptop off completely because it takes an age to boot back up. I usually just hibernate it. I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> you must be new. <laughs> I was expecting Rusty to hit her like quit messing us around, old lady. It's nice that they have the Let's world's oldest it. woman. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, he's off. He's off. Go. Do you want? Do you want to fucking run? Oh, oh, you're running in the bowling alley in, in the wrong shoes. LAPD. What's up with him? Who is this guy? Does he know something? Oh, car chase. To wire a car, Phelps. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast living individual with money to burn. Or a middle age. Have money to burn it. Oh shit, look out! Oh dear. Another one. At least we've got a suspect. Oh, that was close. Oh! What was that music coming to my head? I was trying to think of some chase music and I started thinking of. That's not correct at all. Oh, he's off! He's going off road! There's like thousands of dollars worth of property damage as well as murdering someone. Oh. How do I get? I can't remember how to get my gun out, so to speak. Not literally, you know. Well, literally, you know what I mean. Bang, bang, bang! Oh no, he was going for his glove box, probably. Bang. 
I don't want to talk to you. I just want bang, bang, bang. That's the motto of American police officers, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Um. Some sort of gunfight going on over there. Oh, okay. Am I meant? Am I meant to be here? I guess I have to do this now. Have I just coincidentally bumped into this thing? Alright, alright, we'll do it since we seem to be forced to. Oops, sorry! Ooh! Ow, shit, I sat on my leg and it's gone all dead. That alleyway leads to the rear of the building, sir. Yes, yes. Also, I'm in extreme pain, but good luck. Oh boy. Wow, okay, I'm just dodging bullets like Neo here. Um, <laughs> Phelps, struggling with stairs, come on. How do I... Oh shit, is this thing? It's even lit up. I feel like he's going to shoot me as soon as I get up here. No, suspiciously, I'm doing okay. Oh, right in the brain. Right in the brainium. Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> physics. <laughs> wow. I, was, I, sh I killed him so hard, I broke the laws of physics. Oh. Down, down he goes. Oh, crap, no. Oh. I'm trying to nudge him off the ledge. What the hell happened here? This is good, good physics you got here, Rockstar. Good, <laughs> good job. Okay, maybe this is why I should do the side quests. They're funny. Oh crap! Bye. That was suspiciously easy. Okay. <laughs> well, that was worth it just for that glitch, you know, the, especially the fact that I couldn't, like... I've seen that in games before where Ragdoll will kind of bug out, but usually if you, like, shoot them, they, like, suddenly realise they should fall down and they go, ugh. But that was surprising because shooting corpses doesn't appear to, like, affect the physics, so... I forget how old this game is sometimes, it's like seven or eight years old, isn't it? So who is this guy? Oh, he's a friend, okay. Right, I think we gotta go and interrogate this guy now. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to save time here, basically. Right, well... Because the game really seems to be making me want to think about accidentally getting the wrong guy and that sort of thing. Ultimately, though, like, there's that guy who, like, totally didn't kill his wife, but we, we physically saw him burning evidence and he then ran away and all this sort of thing. If he was innocent, he was acting like a suspicious motherfucker, so I feel no guilt. Oh, I've got... Oh, have they got a lineup? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. Oh, Jameson was the necrophiliac, wasn't he? Incidentally, what's the what's the fine in Cyrodiil for necrophilia? That's nothing compared to Marwin. Thanks. I'm gonna have to find that clip and put it in the end now, aren't I? Where's the interview rooms? Interview room one is this way. Presumably, we have to use both of them. No. Line up. Oh no, that's not actually for us. That's that's just them. 
It looks like a barbershop quartet in there. What are they doing with their arms? Like, please wave your arms in unison. That's not a lineup. That's like a synchronized swimming club. Um, where's the fucking interview room? Ah, hello. Why did you run, Jeremy? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Hmm. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. I don't think that's correct. I think. Oh boy. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? I think the liquor purchase is what I'm going for, because she bought the liquor for a boy. How come this is so hard to believe? A man and a woman getting along, liking each other, just as friends. Oh, okay, I fucked that up. Aristotle's metaphysics, the book that belonged to Macaca. Macaca saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. You're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. Hmm. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. Uh -huh. He always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But you know, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Okay, okay. Let's go for the murder weapon next. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? Yeah, we use a lot of them. Clear jams in the pin setting machines. Hmm. I don't. Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed. Yeah, I don't think we can prove that he used it, but he has. The evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. Oh. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cool. Oh, okay, I mean, we're just gonna take him. We're just gonna take him on his word of that. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. Hmm. Yes, good good shout actually. You're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. She would never stop talking about McCaffrey. Uh oh. McCaffrey was a writer and McCaffrey was a Oh, I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm seeing a pattern. Might as well have. Oh. Kicked her out. Oh, I see. I mean, it seemed like a bit of an escalation to just kill her, but I guess kicking her out. She always wore it. Uh, uh, big black circular disc with a white e in the middle. It was like a little typewriter key. I think this guy's innocent. I think he just kicked, kicked her, kicked her out, and which he shouldn't have done because he knew that they'd pissed off McCaffrey. It's funny, Phelps, because sometimes he seems like the good cop, and other times he's like, "You're in a lot of trouble, the guy I just met." Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> I said that like I just walked in, into someone in the loo. Um, uh, this way, the low resolution <laughs> makes it hard to tell which way I'm going. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. 
Aha. You ready to answer some questions? Do you think I have all the answers? People who run from the police. I am suspicious that this game they only had so many actors, because I swear I've seen the, this guy's face on another character. <laughs> Which is strange to have in such a high budget game. Um, okay, would you have a relationship with the victim? Barely knew Evelyn Summers. She hung around sometimes. I had very little to do with her. Hmm. 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 Well, she literally had a book with your name in it, so. It, it's not like you have something which was on her possession which has my name in it. Oh, wait. We know that you thought enough of her to loan out your copy of the metaphysics. I what? I did no such thing. That bitch stole that book from my apartment. The impudent fucking moron. And that made you angry? Angry? I was livid. Looking up at me with oh, that dear. stupid face of hers, begging me to forgive her. <laughs> Slightly incriminating. Very good. That's one to you, detective. <laughs> I mean, that was a slightly suspicious I outburst, but you know. Remind me, where were you? I was at home. Writing. I'm I was at home, wanking. A manuscript meaning man meaning hand and script meaning penis. <laughs> That was a stretch. That was a stretch. <laughs> Does that even count as a stretch? There was nothing to stretch. So what are we what are we talking about? It's like his alibi, okay. Uh, uh I'm not sure what we can get him on about his alibi other than the accusation. Um let's use an intuition. I keep forgetting I have these things. Uh, well, this doesn't help a lot. He's either telling the truth or lying, which uh, I think he's lying. I bet he's lying. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? Um, the fucking... Oh no, did I not pick up the shirt? Oh no, I didn't pick up the shirt. Oh, for God's sake. Nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> Never mind. Ah, oh, I didn't pick up the shirt, did I? Fuck it. Come on, I physically saw the shirt. Why didn't I? I mean, the fucking Tyra. Uh, uh. And you have someone who can corroborate your story. Unfortunately, no. No, I, I killed my only witness. Uh, well, I know he was there. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with. Oh, thank you. And the note from her mother. And your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? Yes. Oh, shit. He might be telling the truth. Um... Medium height, dark hair and build. <gasps> it could be him. Uh, uh, okay. Move an answer. <gasps> well, he's not telling the truth. don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. We can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn. Yes! Yes! Because accusation... Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Uh -huh. Self-preservation. It's understandable. Okay. I guess that's the only thing is he's the other murder suspect, so he would say this. He came to me for help. I listened to him and he explained why he Tiernan went to you for help. You expect oh him no. Him. That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. 
speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. It's either going to be you or Tiernan, Grosvenor. They could stick to Texas. The party has good lawyers. The party. Oh, maybe he is. He is a dirty, low-down, rotten, red. Okay, we're gonna very quickly go to interview room one again and be like, Oi, you, you didn't say that this happened. Wherever the fuck he is, this way, I think. No, not that way. Yes, this way. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go to be cleared up? Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Sure. Go ahead. I mean, yeah. So Evelyn passed out. I woke up in the morning, very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Oh Tell no! Me what really happened? Because he does seem nervous. What are you talking about? How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Uh. Still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. Oh no. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning. Oh dear. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter in the box. And he said I came in with him last night. said that I killed Evelyn. And then it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. No, this is suspicious. Why would he do this? I don't know, detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. No. I don't want this guy to be it. I don't want him to be it. I don't think it was him, I think it was the other guy, because this guy, he was friends with her, he loved her, like, and it was mutual. Was it mutual? I can't remember. They had an argument, but... Uh, this guy's too... Where, hang on, where is he? Wherever he is. Wherever this son bitch is. He's too slippery, he's too slimy, I don't like it. This way. Oh. Come on, you. Come on. Railroad someone else. I'm not saying anything. There's a telephone here. Is that significant? I'm just gonna close my door. Okay. So. The jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, Detective. <laughs> McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Thanks for your help. It was him. I was already suspicious. Now I'm like, oh, I got you, you son of a. Give it up, Red. Come here, bastard. I'm getting into character. You were in the war? Yes, I was. The only things that I saw. It changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. You, you didn't mention nearly that's killing someone. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yes, never been in trouble for violence, except for nearly killing someone. <laughs> lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor? I don't understand. He, know, he knows that we know he was in the army, so why would he think that we wouldn't also know about his criminal record of assaulting a woman? <laughs> Dishonorable discharge, beating some poor woman here to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. 
Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore. Oh. She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have. You beat her because she stole from you. Oh. Because you tried to outsmart you. We got him. The of the bitch. What is a man oh, supposed to do? Oh, we got him. Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call oh, we a man? got him. He was doing. You were. Stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. <gasps> ding 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 I don't know why music came into my head That's my victory music today apparently Suck it, suck it bitch You're giving, you're giving the party a bad name son Given these capitalists' idea that they're in the right, it's shameful. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked body in the graveyard. That is that is good. Good job there, son. You really. I mean, you knew, you almost got me with that story. I mean, it seemed like a convenience story. No, no, no. It's it's not my bloody shirt and. Ty Ryan, the guy came to me and he left it in my flat and he said he did it and I tried to dispose of it. Why would you ever, like, oh sure, yeah, you've murdered someone, I'll just dispose of the evidence. Also, I'll leave the evidence on the floor in my flat and just go feed the pigeons before disposing of it. <sighs> I was already suspicious. I was already suspicious of this guy and then I knew that he almost killed a woman in the military and he pretty much, uh, hmm. <laughs> I like the case note. Grosvenor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. Brr, brr, brr. That was good. That was a good case. Just because that end bit, I was like, oh, it could be him, but also him. Because this, this McCaffrey guy seemed like an essentially random dude in the bar. I didn't fully understand what the connection was. But then when I saw the, the military thing, oh, I was proud of myself. I was proud of myself for that. Whew, okay, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, I've definitely got to give the computer a break now and need some food and stuff. So, yeah, I will just say I'm enjoying this game. I'm definitely enjoying L.A. Noir. I just find it is a bit repetitive. You know, this was a good one, but some of them it's like, clearly this guy did it. What am I missing? It's clearly him. But I bet it's going to be some twist. I'm looking forward to seeing the end. You know, I'm in that mood where, you know, we're about 10, 12 episodes in. And I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing how it ends, you know? This is why I'm not faffing about the side missions, either. I mean, that one was funny, where it's just that guy, I killed him and he just fell off, and, but he didn't actually fall down, and... Ah, that was good. Good stuff. Well, look forward to more... C copper Capers in the next episode of L.A. Noir. YouTube video copyright infringement. Baker Street, owned by such and such music artist, banned, demonetized.